All right, here's the graphic for this one. It's gold. Number three, this is, we're going to work one through how many ever we can get to. You guys work before the 19 tomorrow, or excuse me, down through 19 tonight. That's where we'll go, and then I'll leave you just like I have been. Tomorrow at the end of class, we'll turn in 20 through 25. I still want to see the work, not on that pocket, on that one sheet of paper. The work goes on there, and even for a problem like this, guys, every single problem you can write some work for. Okay, this is number one, day three. It says, write, or excuse me, which explicit formula describes the pattern in this table? Guys, it would be very easy to go, oh my gosh, I have no earthly idea what they mean by explicit formula. But if you look at it, you notice the formula that they're using here is just the formula form circumference of a circle. That's 3.14 is that pi. So in other words, in which of these formulas can you plug in D and get in which of these ones can you plug D into for 2? 2 times 3.14 is so the one of these that's written like that is D. C equals 3.14 times that. It's just D stands for diameter. Guys, it's the same formula. And this question is asked a lot. This time, instead of plugging in a number, they ask you to plug in x. Because it says, if f of 12 equals 4 times 12 minus 20, which function gives f of x? If I want to find out what f of x is, what normally I do, I normally take 12 and plug right there. But what this is trying to get us to do is identify what it is the other way around. So instead of plugging 12 in like this and writing 4 times 12 minus 20, what they're asking us to do is plug x in for the variable the other way. So the answer to number 2 is... All right, loved this problem earlier in the day as I worked through this one because of some of the uh, some of the things it's going to force us to talk about. Uh, it says after a farmer owns a horse or a farmer owns a horse that continuously run an average of eight miles and uh, for up to six hours, eight miles an hour for up to six hours. Let y be the distance. Distance equals rate times time. Y is the distance for a given amount for a given x amount of time. Okay, then notice it says, uh, which of the following describes the domain? Well, which of those variables is the domain, the x or the y? Nobody? Yeah, x is domain, y is range. So up here, based on the question and the way they laid it out, what is the most amount of time that I can have in this problem? Uh, six. Eight miles an hour for up to six hours. So the most time can be is six. What's the least amount of time can ever be? Zero. So which one of these shows X being between 0 and 6. Now, what concerns me is if instead of being written out like this, instead of being written out as 0 is less than X is less than 6, they chose this problem to remind or to find out if you know what interval notation is. Is there anybody in the room that knows how to write that right there using interval notation? Okay. Since this says less than or equal to, will I use a parenthesis or a bracket? Yeah, I'll use a bracket. So I go 0, comma, 6, and end it in brackets. So these two things, guys, say the same thing right there. Okay, it's just has two things. That's not the one that concerns me. The one that concerns me is if one were written like this right here. Guys, that's going to look like an ordered pair to you. You have to read the context of the problem and understand 
that isn't an ordered pair, that's that number right there. That's the numbers between 0 and 6 with greater than and less than symbols. How do you get them both in there? 0 is less than, x is less than or equal to 6. So over there with 0, what am I going to use? A parenthesis or a black? Parenthesis. And then six brackets. So like this, this is interval notation. It's called interval notation for that thing right there. Again, great problem. <clears throat> Not necessarily because of, of, of how it's set up or anything, but what it can, it can remind us to talk about right here. So the population of squirrels doubles every year, since it doubles every year, that's the thing that gives us, that's the thing that gives us the fact that this is an exponential growth problem, because it's doubling every year. Notice initially there were five squirrels, therefore it's five times t, or excuse me, not t, two to the t. This is about the fourth or fifth time I've gone over this concept, but just trying to make sure. Remember, if this was five times two to the zero, if my time is zero right here, and I wrote five times t to the zero, what is two to the zero power? One. one. So five times one would give me. And this right here represents the initial amount for the squirrels. Remember, if you want to take this number 2 and make a fraction out of it, you do negative exponents. 2 to the negative first is 1 half. 2 to the negative second is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative third is 1 eighth. And not, and not negative 2, negative 4, and negative 8. Those negative exponents move stuff to the bottom of fractions. So anyway... This question says, what is the range of the function? Well, we just worked the domain. We just worked the numbers you plug into the equation. Guys, the numbers that you get out of the equation is the picture. That's what the range is. Is there anything that you notice about all of those points on that red line right there in comparison to where my arm is sitting right now? All of those points are where, in, in terms of my arm, above your arm. How do you say above the x-axis? Greater. Okay. Remember, remember this right here. This right here is the asymptote. And all of those points on that graph are, look, every y in this picture is positive. Okay, as soon as I said every y in this picture is positive, at fourth period this morning, somebody said, oh, so the answer must be A, any real number. It can't be A, any real number, because I just said it has to be, it has to be positive. So then it becomes a matter of reading this right here, and it's any whole number greater than zero, any whole number greater than five, any whole number greater than or equal to zero. Any whole number greater than zero. The function on this coordinate grid shows why the height of a ball dropped in feet after its x bounce. So, where did the thing start at? How many feet up? So, I dropped it 25 feet. It hit the ground and bounced back up how high? It hit the ground and bounced back up almost two feet. It hit the... Okay, again now, look. They've just connected the lines in here. This is the number of bounces. Okay, so one bounce, two bounce, three bounce, four bounce, two, 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 and it eventually, it just keep on going flat. Okay, so when was the height of the ball 10 feet? One bounce, one bounce. 
you let it go from 25 feet, it came down, hit the ground, and bounced back up 10 feet. Ooh, good one. Something like that, one comma ten. To rent a canoe, excuse me, guys, not done. To rent a canoe is three dollars for the oars, and life would plus five dollars an hour. So if you rent it one hour, how much is the total? Hey, if you rent it two hours, how much is the total? Fourteen. Two point 